Welcome to SU News Channel. Female boxer yells, this is unjust, and falls to her knees in tears as she quits fight against biologically male Olympic opponent Emane Khalif after just 46 seconds following two powerful punches. A boxer deemed a biological male today won against an Italian woman in one of the most controversial Olympic bouts ever. The fight between Italy's Angela Carini and her Algerian opponent Emane Khalif took just 46 seconds, with the Italian throwing her helmet onto the floor as the clash was abandoned, yelling, this is unjust. The 25-year-old refused the handshake and fell to the canvas sobbing having received just two punches from Khalif, who had been banned from a major boxing contest before the Olympics. Khalif was thrown out of last year's world championships after failing testosterone tests carried out to establish gender qualification. After the match was stopped, the referee raised Khalif's hand in the air. But a visibly furious Karini yanked her own hand away from the fight official and walked off. Ignoring the Algerian, the Italian fighter then plunged to her knees and burst into tears as she said she had never felt such strong blows in a contest before. Speaking after the match, the heartbroken Italian said, I'm used to suffering. I've never taken a punch like that, it's impossible to continue. I'm nobody to say it's illegal. I got into the ring to fight. But I didn't feel like it anymore after the first minute. I started to feel a strong pain in my nose. I didn't give up, but a punch hurt too much and so I said enough. I'm leaving with my head held high. She said she did not walk away from the fight as a protest against her opponent's inclusion, but that was a decision for the Olympics to consider. She was taken away for medical assessment to examine the seriousness of her facial injuries which included a bruised nose. Karini added, I entered the ring and I told myself I have to take out all of myself independently from the person I had in front of me. And honestly, I don't care. I said to myself, this is my Olympics. Independently, from all controversy, I just wanted to carry on and win. I am not one that easily surrenders. Even if they told me, let's not fight, I would not have accepted it. I am a fighter. My father taught me to be a warrior. When I am in the ring, I use that mindset, the mindset of a warrior, a winning mindset. This time I couldn't make it. You all saw my nose that started bleeding. I didn't lose tonight, I just surrendered with maturity. I wish her to carry on until the end and that she can be happy. I am someone who doesn't judge anyone. I am not here to give judgments. I simply entered the ring to fight and to fight for my dream. It didn't happen. Evidently, God and my father wanted this and I accept it. I am not in the position of saying this is right or wrong. I am not. I did my job as a boxer, entering the ring and fighting. I didn't manage to, but I am exiting with my head held high and with a broken heart. I am a mature woman, the ring is my life. I've always been very instinctive, but when I feel something is not going well, it's not a surrender but having the maturity to stop. Karini's coach in the mix zone after the fight said, I don't know if her nose is broken. I have to speak with the girl. But many people in Italy tried to call and tell her, don't go please, it's a man, it's dangerous for you. After the fight, the Algerian Boxing Federation gloated about Khalif's victory, posting on Facebook, congratulations to the Algerian boxer Iman Khalif, who responds strongly in the ring and qualifies for the quarterfinals, after defeating the Italian Angelina Carini in less than 46 seconds, effortlessly. Speaking as she left the ring, the Algerian boxer added, God willing, this was the first victory. God is willing me to the golden one. Bosses at the IOC are now facing a furious backlash following the fight, with former Prime Minister Liz Truss blasting the clash. Writing on Twitter, the former Tory MP said, When will this madness stop? Men cannot become women. Why is the British government not objecting to this? British Olympic hero Sharon Davies also waded into the controversy, raging, this is shocking. The IOC are a bloody disgrace. In effect legalizing beating up females. This must stop. What the hell's the matter with them? While Harry Potter author J.K. Rowling branded the contest insanity. In a post yesterday, the gender-critical author wrote, what will it take to end this insanity? A female boxer left with life-altering injuries? A female boxer killed? Posting a video of the fight today, the author added, watch this, whole thread, then explain why you're okay with a man beating a woman in public for your entertainment. This isn't sport. 
From the bullying cheat in red all the way up to the organizers who allowed this to happen, this is men reveling in their power over women. Carini is an Italian police officer with the Fiam Oro. Her mantra is, boxing is a sport that teaches you to have respect for your opponent. It can be a weapon in life, but only for defense. It cannot and must not become an abuse. Like any sport, it can instead become a vehicle for venting anger and pain. But despite her gender test problems, she was admitted to the Olympics amid a huge furor. Olympics officials at Paris 2024 have accepted her as a female in state so in her official games biography. Another female boxer Lin Yuting of Taiwan was also disqualified from the 2023 Women's Boxing World Championships for failing a gender eligibility test. Former world featherweight champion Barry McGuigan, now president of the Professional Boxing Association, said it was a shocking and pathetic decision to allow a man to fight women. Umar Kremlov, president of the International Boxing Association, IBA, has said after a series of DNA tests the association uncovered athletes who were trying to fool their colleagues and pretended to be women. Kremlov claimed that the tests proved they had XY chromosomes and were thus excluded from the sports events. Italy's sports minister Andrea Obodi raised concerns about Khalif competing, but Angela Carini was on record as saying that respect of her opponents was her mantra. Algeria's Olympic Committee condemned as baseless the attacks on their boxer after questions were raised over her participation at the Paris Olympics. But Khalif, who competed at the 2020 Tokyo Olympics, only fell into controversy after failing the tests last year in New Delhi. She received resounding applause from staunch Algerian supporters as she entered the ring, but there were several boos. At 5 feet 10 inches and 2 inches taller than her police officer opponent, Khalif showed off her power with a series of powerful punches early in the three-round contest. But it was over in less than a minute. Italian officials had already protested the inclusion of the Algerian and Olympic officials were assessing how to deal with further controversies surrounding the Algerian as she fights her way towards a medal. Karini's father also served in the police, but was injured in an accident when she was a toddler and had to use a wheelchair for the rest of his life. Speaking in 2020, she said, My father is my hero. I am very attached to him, he taught me that in life you should never give up. And when I'm in the ring and the situation gets tough, I hear his example, I never give up. When he was paralyzed I was only two years old. I grew up on his legs, he never made me miss anything. I have never seen him as a different father from the others, the chair on which he is sitting has never divided us, quite the contrary. Her father died away in 2021, a few days after her Olympic debut at the delayed Tokyo 2020 Games, and she considered quitting the sport. I didn't want to box without my dad anymore. But I came back because I owe it to him. He has always been by my side and now we fight together. The clash comes amid a gender storm at the Olympics over biologically male fighters competing in the female divisions. IOC bosses overseeing the Olympics in Paris said Khalif met the eligibility criteria to compete, despite concerns of the boxer's biological sex. Following last year's ban, the Algerian Olympic Committee hit back, claiming the disqualification was part of a conspiracy to stop them from winning a gold meal and said medical reasons were behind high testosterone levels. After the disqualification, Mexico's Brianda Tamara came forward with her own experience of fighting Khalif earlier in the tournament. When I fought with her I felt very out of my depth, she wrote on X, her blows hurt me a lot, I don't think I had ever felt like that in my 13 years as a boxer, nor in my sparring with men. Thank God that day I got out of the ring safely, and it's good that they finally realized. Also given the green light to fight is Lin Yuting of Taiwan, who was also thrown out of the world championships amid questions about their sex. According to feminist website Redux, both are thought both are impacted by a difference of sexual development, DSD, a series of medical conditions identified at birth where genitalia is atypical in relation to chromosomes. McGuigan is among those questioning the situation. It's shocking that they were actually allowed to get this far, what is going on, he wrote on X. Elsewhere, Nancy Hogshead, the American swimmer who won three golds at the 1984 Games, waded into the row, claiming that gender ideology will get women killed. Hogshead wrote, Imane Khalif of Algeria and Lin Yuting of Taiwan are scheduled to compete in women's Olympic boxing, despite being disqualified last year for having XY chromosomes, the male phenotype. Let's remind ourselves that males, however they identify, pack a punch that is 162% more powerful than women, the biggest performance gap between men and women. Gender ideology will get women killed.
One X user added, men punching women is now officially an Olympic sport. An IOC spokesperson said, all athletes participating in the boxing tournament comply with the competition's eligibility and entry regulations, as well as all applicable medical regulations, in accordance with the Paris 2024 boxing unit. But Olympic chiefs' decisions to ditch rules on gender testing for athletes have been branded crazy by critics. Speaking to Mail Online sports scientist Professor Ross Tucker said, would you allow a 90 kilograms fighter to fight against a 60 kilograms fighter? Because that's more or less what the difference is in strength and power between male and female boxers. Tests on both Khalif and Yuting revealed XY chromosomes in their systems. Rare intersex medical conditions, medically known as differences in sexual development, DSDs, can also mean outwardly female individuals can have male chromosomes, or vice versa. Speaking yesterday International Olympic Committee spokesperson Mark Adams said, everyone competing in the women's category is complying with the competition eligibility rules. He added, they are women in their passports and it's stated that this is the case, that they are female. Sports scientists told Mail Online that an absence of clear policy by the Olympics in this area had allowed the bizarre situation to develop. Prior to 2021, the IOC set thresholds for the maximum amount of testosterone, the male sex hormone, competitors in women's events could have. These were picked up in blood tests, similar to ones for doping. Rules on testosterone limits had been previously brought into sharp focus by the very public and famous case of Castor Semenya. Semenya has a condition which means her body naturally produces higher levels of testosterone than normal for women. She became unable to compete at Tokyo in 2020 after World Athletics brought in new rules independently of the IOC at the time. IOC's own testosterone monitoring policies were halted three years ago and replaced with a policy of fairness, inclusion, and non-discrimination on the basis of gender identify and sex variation. The IOC now provides individual sporting bodies in every country with 10 guiding principles they can use to make their own policies. This controversial document states that athletes with sex variations, another term for DSDs, have no presumption of advantage and that they should be allowed to compete in the category of their gender identity. There are exceptions, with framework stating that an evidence-based approach can be used to exclude athletes who have a consistent unfair disproportionate advantage or if there is an unpreventable risk to the safety of other athletes. However, some sports scientists say that, by themselves, these guidelines are woolly and open to interpretation. Federations that govern rugby, track and field, swimming and cycling have all introduced rules in some form to address biological males in women's sport, though the exact details of policies vary. And boxing did as well, with the International Boxing Association, IAB, requiring athletes to undergo gender assessment. Though it doesn't detail the exact nature of these assessments, it is this test that Khalif and Lin failed last year at the IAB's Women's World Boxing Championships in New Delhi. At the time IBA president, Umar Kremlov, claimed the tests had proven both Khalif and Lin had XY chromosomes. He added that they uncovered athletes who were trying to fool their colleagues and pretend to be women. Under these same rules and test results Khalif and Lin wouldn't be able to compete this Olympics, but the IAB was stripped of its role in governing the sport for the Paris Games by the IOC due to problems with the latter's governance. The IOC created via a new body, the Paris Boxing Unit, PBU, to determine eligibility for competitors. Documents from the PBU make no mention of gender or sex testing for male or female events, though they do set limits for the age of competitors, a passport being an acceptable ID for athletes and requiring boxers in the women's category to declare if they are pregnant. Defending its decision to approve Khalif and Lin as women the IOC's Mr. Adams added, these athletes have competed many times before for many years. They haven't just suddenly arrived. But sports scientist Professor Tucker said the absence of clear policy by the IOC in this area had allowed this situation to occur. Last year, Khalif and Lin did not meet eligibility requirements and the only reason they do now is the body that did rule them ineligible has been moved aside, he said. It's due to a vacuum of policy, there's no policy now. Source, dailymail.co.uk Please like share and subscribe. Thank you for watching.